Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, there has been a lot of discussion surrounding the difficulty of the Shadow of the Air Tree DLC, and more than anything, this applies to the bosses of the game, more than just the trash enemies around the place, and of course, the toughest, and honestly, therefore most memorable, are the Remembrance bosses. And, you know, the one that basically is a Remembrance boss, just through a different function. Today, as the objectively least skilled Elden Ring player on this channel, I'm going to rate the difficulty of every Remembrance boss, and also a certain sizable dragon, based from my experience fighting them in various ways and various builds, as well as watching Josh do every boss attempt of his initial playthrough for a different person and playstyle's perspective as well. That said, I'll start at the one that I think is the easiest on the list. Spoilers for the bosses are going to be in this video, if that wasn't obvious, but the easiest one is Romina, Saint of the Bud. And I'm sort of disappointed to say that, honestly, because it's this awesome, holy, scarlet, rot-wielding hybrid between multiple species that just looks absolutely gnarly, and I love everything about this fight as a concept, but I don't find it that hard at all, really. The hardest thing about it is if you get Scarlet Rot, but I consider it to be the most learnable and abusable Remembrance boss in the DLC. It has a lot of dead zones on attacks that you can sneak around to get bonus hits in. It has a lot of long wind-ups before attacks rather than long, fast combos, so it's actually sort of easy to recognize the telegraphs on them. And on top of that, she is weak to bleed, as well as fire damage. Both of those are two of the most common build types in Elden Ring, if we were to consider that a factor as well. Overall, I consider this a super satisfying fight every time that I've done it, but probably the least consistently challenging one in the DLC at the same time. Second easiest I've got, Midra, the Lord of Frenzied Flame. But this sort of depends on how strong your build is as well and the playstyle of it. The more ungabunga you are, the easier that Midra actually is. High damage big melee weapons have a lot of abusable openings in the fight, such as right at the start of the phase of the actual fight where you can walk right up to him and he's firing out his Cone of Madness, and if you go around him just slightly, you can do multiple charge attacks in a row, and he has a relatively low stagger threshold as well. Overall, his combos are not overly long either, even if he can move and attack you, which is a rarity in this expansion. Most things do have very long combos, and the main overarching danger of this fight is if you contract madness, which you are usually dead if you actually get it. As well, a couple of the attacks are a bit of a toss-up too. The extended laser beam is sort of nasty to dodge if you don't roll diagonally forward due to the way that it tracks, which did take me a little bit to work out. And the sort of phase switch move, where he turns into a big frenzied flame orb and drops it on you, I have no idea how you're supposed to avoid that other than sheer distance as 90% of the times that I try to roll it, it doesn't work, and you definitely can't jump it. But other than that, for melee, he's a pushover. For range, it's a bit different. You basically have to play any magic builds in melee range just because of the way that he actually works. But once you've worked that out and you start to adjust to it, I still think that he's not so bad at all. I'd put him up a tier over Romina, the Saint of the Bud, but I think most of the other bosses are still a tier above him as well. The one possible exception to that, though, is Mater Mother of Fingers. This is a lovely spectacle fight, and for magic, magic or ranged builds, it's just piss easy. Her spells are easy to deal with from far away, and she is content to not gap close on you, which pretty much every other DLC boss will be doing relentlessly, making them much harder for ranged builds. Melee, however, gets a bit more murky. She has some massive hitboxes, and she will absolutely cover you with her entire body with her melee moveset, which makes it really difficult to dodge positionally. Only iframes can really get you through stuff, which then limits the amount of hits that you're actually allowed to get in against her and the openings that you have. I consider this to be one of the earliest bosses on the list where patience is a virtue, as getting greedy in this fight will start to really punish you from this point up. Again, un unless you're using magic because it sort of just counters her in a weird way, honestly, because she is just one of the most powerful magical entities in the game. Past that, then, next up, I have the Shadow Tree Avatar, the cute little sunflower guy that hangs out at the base of the Shadow Tree. This is a really neat fight conceptually, and honestly, an absolute visual spectacle at times, too. But there are only two real hurdles to beating it, which are First, working out the timing to dodge the thorn spell in the first phase, working out the actual timing of the charges in the second phase, and working out how to dodge roll the giant explosion in the third phase. But after that, it's just working out that when you dump its health bar, it will enter a crit attack state that will significantly lower the amount of health it returns to if you get the crit when it respawns. And while its moveset does get more dangerous and more complex with each phase, if you do these crit attacks, it will just have way less health in each phase, which means way less time to actually be a threat. Not to mention, it has an 
absolutely horrid weakness to fire, like any fire damage at all, and he just gets completely ruined. And unlike some bosses where their weaknesses take a bit of guesswork, they aren't quite as obvious, this is a goddamn flowery tree. Of course it'll be weak to fire, which makes it really simple to counter even without having to look anything up. We're now entering our middle section of the list then, which starts off being graced by Rolana, the Twin Moon Knight. This is one of my favorite fights in the entire DLC, unbelievably satisfying patterns to learn. And this boss is an early teacher that you will need to find your patience in this expansion. Some bosses will have ridiculously long and specific attack chains, and if you get greedy for even a moment, you can get yourself comboed to death. These ones require you to either cheese them into insanity or just get good at learning their patterns, memorize their openings, and then get the job done. I think this fight has a lot of potential roll catches, it has a lot of specific uh, directional dodges that it asks you to do so that you don't get hit by the second sword in her hits, and there's also things like her giant moon sorcery where she does three delayed combos that you have to jump and there's a little bit of a just a little bit of a hesitation just before the last one and it's just it, it isn't a hard thing as a fight because of bullshit or unfairness it is just hard in the most literal sense of long combos and unique dodge timings i love it and i think this is where it belongs on the list after that i've got the technically not remembrance boss who is bail the dread curse you bail right in the middle of the list he has an insane hitbox on a lot of his attacks not one that is hard to read necessarily even for his size, but just one that means that you really need to learn how to dodge each of his attacks. He doesn't get any particularly crazy long chain attack combos or weird timings. The main difficulty of Bale comes from how ridiculously mobile he is, making him just exceedingly hard for close range focused builds to actually keep up with him properly. Not to mention that the only lock on point is his head compared to most dragon type enemies where you can lock onto their chest or their feet for easier targets because his head is in the air and moves a lot with his attacks. And that just makes even and trying to hit him consistently in melee, really just sort of frustrating. My experience fighting him is filled with a lot of swinging, his head moving, and then I miss, and then I let out a sort of snort of disrespect upon his entire family line. That said, I think that gives him enough of an added layer of difficulty that he's above Rolana for me, but not enough that it surpasses anything else from this point forward, hence his stop right in the middle. I should add though that spells as well sort of absolutely ruin him and don't at all suffer anywhere close to as much from the singular lock on point of his head. Then just past the midpoint, I actually have Divine Beast Dancing Lion, the first one that most people will actually find. My reasoning for this is pretty simple. He is big, his attacks are really unintuitive to read, because it's literally one guy standing on top of the shoulders of another under like a, a blanket, and I don't know if you've seen this clip of them without the covering on, but they don't even move in a way that would make sense for two people standing on top of each other either. The actual motions are just unnatural and difficult to read for the human brain in a logical way, so you are forced to learn the actual patterns and the timings, rather than than reading and reacting, it's more like Dance Dance Revolution. And on top of that, it is an awkwardly large boss for its speed, which means that it eats up a lot of your camera, which can make things just sort of weird to actually deal with. And I also think that the arena that you fight it in is probably at least 30% smaller than it should be. All that considered though, I think this boss is about as difficult as you make it. It has a lot of irritants or things that make it feel like a little bit of artificial difficulty, but his moveset is learnable with enough patience. And I think the main thing anyone who has really struggled with this boss has realized is that they probably did in way too low of a shadow tree blessing level compared to what was achievable before doing the boss. Moving up, then we have what I consider entering the upper tier. Not quite the highest tier because that's only one boss, but we're getting there. And first tier is Commander Gaius. This boar riding son of a shit has an extremely annoying charge hitbox that he uses at the start of every fight, and I swear it extends out further sideways than visually matches him as well. But much more than that, his damage is insanely high compared to pretty much anything else that you can fight around the same area, even higher than Mesmer, depending on your specific setup, as he is mostly physical damage based. And more than that, his moveset has a number of stage four poise breaking things, meaning they flinch you even through Injure, which is crazy. He has a lot of long combos, and most of those combos involve both his own weapon and the boar itself, which means that you have to sort of split your attention and watch back and forth between two different sources of movement to actually get the timing right on your dodges. And he has a number of attacks that just took me way too many attempts to work out how to dodge them properly without taking damage, like the phase transition spin dunk attack that just sends out waves of rock blasts after impact. Not to mention that on top of that, even after you dodge his entire long combos, oftentimes they'll just sort of run out of the range of your attacks, at least for melee people. Sure, the one saving grace is that you can use torrent in this arena, but I honestly don't think for the vast, vast majority of builds, 
that's even really an advantage, as there's just tons of spells that you cannot use from Torrent, and you can't do things like Ashes of War weapon skills or power stancing weapons or anything like that either. After that, then, we are now at the third hardest boss in the DLC, and here I've got Mesmer the Impaler. This is genuinely, I think, the most satisfying boss in the entire DLC. I may have more feelings about the final boss once I've done him a bit more, but the amount of times I've done Mesmer, this is how I feel. It's also extremely, extremely punishing. So many of his attacks will flinch you just the right amount to combo into a second hit, but what that does is punish greed and incentivize patience and learning. His movements are really intuitive, and no part of the fight honestly feels unfair to me in the slightest. It's just a tough fight with a ton of long combo strings with very specific directional dodges required on occasion, and it punishes the hell out of roll spamming. It wants you to learn the timings properly. Honestly, one boss at a time going up this list, it feels like every one of the ones that I have ranked harder is almost like a setup to teach you one bit at a time how to handle what will be the obvious final entry on the list. Patience, waiting for your openings, don't get greedy and treat every mistake and failure that you have as a learning experience. Find these specific angles that you can move that give you the openings and advantages to actually hit back and learn how to make the best use of those openings when they present themselves. And this is just sort of a matter of having things line up once you've learned that until the boss dies. Second hardest, some will maybe disagree, I've got Putrescent Knight. The reason is simple, I don't like the way he moves. I don't like it at all. If Divine Beast Dancing Lion moves in an intuitive and unnatural way for the human brain to process, this guy is a goddamn enigma. I don't like his super ridiculously long combos either, I don't like how much poise damage he deals, I don't like that he can throw his weapon like a boomerang, and I really don't like that he can change which side of him his horse will come from to attack you in the middle of his long combos, which again, like Gaius, are split between the horse and the guy himself. Not to mention that with combos even longer than Gaius has, he spends most of the time after ending his combos just ending up really far out of range of you, so you can't attack him and you can't actually make use of an opening, so a lot of the time you'll just dodge for like 30 seconds straight because every time he ends a combo you sprint towards him, then he starts a new combo, and some of these things I think are unfun, some of them I think are entirely fair and just contribute to making it a hard fight, but I think there is a very clear and stark difference between the way that Mesmer is difficult and the way that Putrescent Knight is difficult. Then in the top spot, it was never in any sort of doubt, it is Radon, the final boss. This goddamn guy, I love him so much. I love his lore, and I don't care if some people think it's fan service. I love the way that this all sort of capped off the expansion. And like Mesmer, I think this fight has very, very little actually unfair bits of it or bullshit at all. It all really feels like earned, genuine difficulty. Nothing is overly complex to actually grasp. I've heard uh, people spending multiple days, hours of each day, fighting just this boss and nothing else. Full Shadow Tree Blessing, strong ass build, doesn't matter. Of course, there are ways that exist to cheese him. Hell, I myself worked at a ridiculously reliable method to make him die to nothing but the mimics here alone, with me just standing there blocking everything. But that wasn't my first skill to calm down. But the point is, because he isn't difficult in a way that's unfair, it means it is one of those fights with a sort of self-controlled difficulty slider. I think if you go into him with the mindset that bleed and magic are the devil's work and summons are weird scary ghosts that follow me around, then you'll find him to likely be the hardest boss in the entirety of Elden Ring, with the one potential debate being for Melania over him, but that is only really because of the fact that she heals, because if we go off of pure moveset alone, Waterfowl Dance is nothing compared to 20 chain hit combos with directional aftershocks of holy light, followed by Radon jumping at your head from a mile away, and ending about 25 times in the span of a second before then trying to give you a hug as if that'll make it less painful. Not to mention the fact that he actually has about six different combos of this length, and the fact that he even has the grab that he does, which honestly is more hilarious than difficult. Most DLC bosses, if they hit their grab attack on you once, you just die. Unless you are built to be at full tank, I guess. This one will auto-kill you on the second grab that hits, but the first grab that hits is basically just a loving, peaceful timeout. It feels like that developers knew this fight was insanely hard and said, hey, let's just give them a few seconds to rest the first time that they get hugged by Radon. I think that would be real. And I don't blame them at all if that's the case because he is easily at the top of this list for a reason. That just about does it for today then everyone, every Remembrance boss as well as a boss whose heart you carve out and then trade for one of two options. Of course, this is based on my own experiences and opinions about their difficulty, so feel free to let me know your own thoughts on all of this in the comments down below. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Boop, <laughs>
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye <laughs>